And finally, a few words about bibliographic references and uh, how LaTeX can help you manage these. Uh, bibliographic references are probably less important for a part two dissertation, but quite important for a master thesis and a PhD thesis in particular. Um, why do we have um, bibliographic references? Uh, well, academic writing uh, greatly emphasizes detailed references to prior work, uh, not only to support arguments were actually was a fact that you claim is known in the literature exactly stated who claimed this before or who had some idea before, um, but also <clears throat> to document in a dissertation in particular your own familiarity with the field to show uh, which literature, related literature to the subject have you read and uh, found useful for understanding the subject in particular to help newcomers to the field. So many of the bibliographic references will be particularly useful for the next generation of students who try to continue with your work. We also give um, bibliographic references to give due academic uh, credit if we are reusing some material, uh, some, some figure or some ideas or so, we should always very clearly state where we got this from. Um, <clears throat> and more recently, um, bibliographic references also have become a data source. So there are recommendation systems that try to build a what's known as a bibliometric graph, a graph where the edges are uh, bibliographic references and the vertices are publications. And then uh, there are search engines like Google Scholar that automatically will uh, not only find out who has cited whom, but also provide notification services. So one of my main ways of staying informed about what's going on in my particular field is I get every week automatically notified by Google Scholars who has cited my prior work. And that is a quite good way of figuring out who else has worked on similar topics that I've been interested in and written about in the past. So getting these uh, bibliographic references uh, right is also a way of advertising your own work. Someone who has followed up on my work puts a reference to my uh, work into their paper and that triggers Google Scholar to tell me about their new paper. So I will be more likely to refer to their work. Um, so citing someone is a bi-directional link that you add to the bibliographic, um, bibliometric graph and therefore quite important to get right. What should a bibliographic reference contain? Well, it should contain all the information needed to help a reader to, and also a search engine to unambiguously find uh, where to get this text from. And that <clears throat> as a minimum includes um, the, at least the first two authors, if there isn't space. Sometimes there's a very large number of authors. One of my colleagues regularly uh, publishes reports with more than 20 authors and for some famous scientific collaborations like the discovery of the Higgs boson, there were I think in the region of 3000 authors on one paper. So uh, then you have to uh, abbreviate the list of authors a bit. Um, if it's a paper uh, publication, then you need to include all the details required to find this via interlibrary loan. So the names and locations of the publishers issue page numbers and printed circ journals and so on. Um, today, most newer scientific publications are retrieved online and there are other identifiers, uh, URIs, uh, digital object identifiers and so on. <clears throat> there are also literature where you can't uh, so-called so gray literature, um, which isn't formally published through publishers and archived in libraries. Um, but you still can find it because it was, for example, a URL on the author's homepage or on a company's page. 
There are various archival services such as archive.org or similar things that the British Library now operates um, in order to uh, allow the same version of the document to retrieve whenever you quote a URL. It's very, very important that you also um, include the date on which you checked that this URL was actually valid because only this way uh, have the readers a good chance to see the same from an archival site, the same version of the web page uh, that you are actually referring to. It may change significantly later. When you publish something on a URL, please make some effort. Uh, if the URL goes away to uh, set a HTTP redirect of your URL to, uh, for example, if you work in a department for a while and then you move to another department and you take, take your documents with you, often the department will offer you to host a HTTP redirect, a particular answer that the web server can send to the client that the document you ask for has now moved elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> because bibliographic references that contain all this information are a little bit longer, um, it has become customary to either move them into a footnote or to move them at the end of a chapter in some textbooks or in many monographs, dissertations or so, you move the uh, full bibliographic references at the end of the document and then you just have a short reference in the middle of the text. And which type of short references used depends a little bit on the style. Uh, so in the humanities, it's quite common to use uh, the first name of the surname of the first author followed by the title or uh, to use the author followed by the date or the author followed by a number associated with the author. But all of these are quite rare these days with LaTeX. They are mostly workarounds because uh, they made it unnecessary to renumber all your references because computers now can easily renumber references. In particular, LaTeX was one of the first packages that made this widely available. It's now very commonly used, in particular in computer science, to just have in uh, square brackets a uh, numeric reference to the enumerated list of um, bibliographic references at the end of the document. However, <clears throat> there's also a stylistic uh, question. Um, I personally find it quite bad style to use these numeric references like a noun in a sentence. Um, I still would like to know who was this actually to have the number when it's used for the first time introduced uh, slightly to give some context, the year and the author, but in free form. So I would recommend uh, rather than writing something like as shown by 17, which I think is a not very courteous reference to someone else's work. I would actually name the in particular, if it's a single author, something like as Knuth showed in 1988, and then use the reference more like a footnote. This here indicates how you can find exactly which paper I'm talking about, but I give some time and author information separately from that. Also very important when you reference books, books can be quite large, include at least a chapter or a page number and LaTeX has a quite elegant mechanism to associate an additional information with such a reference number. So how do you typeset a, a bibliographic a bibliography and a bibliographic reference in LaTeX. At the end of your document, you put the, the bibliography environment and in there you put louder bib items and the bib items have as a mandatory argument a alphanumeric identifier and then there's some freeform text which is the actual bibliographic reference. So this is essentially a specialized um, enumerate uh, environment and you can 
refer to it not with the normal ref and label, but the label is here, the label statement is here built in, and there's a special site command that also automatically adds the square angle brackets. So finer details on the use of n dashes are explained by Lampert, and then we want to insert the reference here, site Lampert 94, and you will get the number of this bibliographic item. If it's a larger book, for example here, Lynn Dupre has written a very nice uh, style guide for computer scientists, specifically bugs in writing, a guide to debugging your prose. Um, if you want to refer to a particular page in a book, then give to the site um, macro an optional argument in square bracket with the page number, and this information will be also inserted into the same reference. You may wonder what this strange argument 9 up here is. Again, this is a consequence of um, Tech being a single pass engine. Um, at the beginning, when the first item is typeset, the bibliography environment doesn't know uh, how long the, how many digits the longest reference will be. Therefore, it does not know how much indentation to use such that the references will not uh, stick out of the left margin of the text. So you can indicate here the number of digits. So if you write, for example, nine, that means you only have less than 10 references. If you write 99, you uh, indicate you have less than 100 references and the indentation should be suitable for uh, up to two digit references. Um, if you have a very large, this is really more for, for PhD students, if you have a very large number of references and you write uh, in the course of your research project a large number of papers that always refer to subsets of the same collection of references, then it becomes quite tedious to maintain uh, these the bibliography environments at the end uh, manually because um, each time you add a new reference, you would like automatically the reference to be added from your database. You would like to have some software that automatically scans through the text which papers have you referenced, and then it automatically lists all the ones, possibly even in the order in which you referenced them in the bibliography. And there's a tool called BibTech, that's a separate program. And this diagram here shows a little bit the uh, the flow that works, uh, the, the data flow, how BibTech is used. <clears throat> so you have your tech file and the tech file contains these references. So you send the tech file first through LaTeX once. That produces the aux file that I mentioned before, which contains all the references, which says, um, for example, we have referred to a bibliographic reference call with the alphanumeric identifier Lampert 94. Then you run bibtech over that. It collects from the aux file all the uh, references that have actually been used. It also use, reads a .bib file, which is a database of all the references uh, that you have collected as part of your project. It also reads a BST file, a bibliography style file that indicates in this particular publication, how would you like references to be formatted? For example, would you like to write out the full name or would you like to abbreviate uh, first names? Do you want to type the titles in italics? What notation do you use for journal um, issue numbers and, and volume numbers and so on? And BibTech then produces a BBL file which just contains the bibliography environment um, that contains all these references taken from the database according to the ones you have referenced formatted in the specified style. And this is then automatically included by the uh, bibliography command um, into LaTeX. And then you call LaTeX once more to actually 
include this bibliography and in order to resolve the references you have to call LaTeX a third time and then you have a PDF with all these references automatically appended um, very nicely. So how does such a BIP file look like? Um, it contains a series of entries, one for each document in a sort of database-like format. You first specify after an add sign what type of document it is. Um, so this could be a journal article, this could be a conference paper, this could be a technical report, this could be a dissertation, or there's also a miscellaneous for anything else like a piece of software. Then you specify a alphanumeric identifier by which the author can uh, refer to it with a site command. And then you have these fields, author, title, year, and so on. And in Appendix B of the LaTeX book, there is a list of which type of uh, document can have which type of attribute or database field. Um, <clears throat> there is one particular curiosity about um, BibTeX that very few uh, new users understand and therefore mess up a bit. Um, and this has to do whether the title is written in uppercase or lowercase. Many US publishers use something called title case for publications where they capitalize most uh, words other than, for example, short article or propositions, uh, prepositions. This is a sort of form of emphasis like boldface. It looks a little bit bigger if most words use start with an uppercase uh, letter. Uh, but this may look nice on a book cover. This may look nice in the uh, title on, on the first page, but it looks a bit inappropriate in the middle of a bibliographic reference. And because uh, many authors don't bother uh, reformatting the title and removing the title case and using lowercase letters, BibTeX tries to do this automatically. So whenever um, you type into a BIP file a uh, string like case study of the Cambridge Fastring ECL chip using Hull, uh, then if you hadn't protected with additional curly braces any proper names, any proper nouns, any names or acronyms in this title, what BibTeX would have done is, apart from the first letter, it would have automatically forced everything to lowercase. So you quite often see titles like this here where the name Cambridge Fastring or ECL, an acronym, or HOL, also an acronym, has been forced into lowercase. Instead, what we wanted to have in lowercase is normal nouns like study or chip should be in lowercase, but names should preserve the upper casing, which in English indicates that this is a name and not a regular noun. And you do this in the BIP format by putting curly braces around anything that you don't want to be lowercased. <clears throat>